I recreated the Netflix intro using a .NET console application. And today, we'll see how. I watched this video of a guy that recreated the Netflix intro using Yarn, so I started thinking, would it be possible to do it with .NET, but in a console application? Challenge accepted. So I decided to split the problem in two. I knew that I needed to render that image animation on the terminal, but on the other side, I needed that sound, that from Netflix that everyone knows. So I split the problem in two and I start by the image itself. For the animation part, I want to look at spectre.console because anything as crazy as it is that you want to do on your terminal using .NET, Spectre for sure will be your tool. So let's do it. First thing, create a console application. Okay, it's a simple console application. And now let's take a look into spectre.console to see what you can do with it. This is the documentation of spectre.console, a open source project that I really love. Make sure that you go to the GitHub page of Spectre and you leave a star there. I know that I want to render that image animation. And the way that I'm thinking about it is that maybe I can find a way of translating those frames that we see on the animation into multiple images that I will render one after the other one. First thing is installing spectre.console. So let's go here to the kickstart. I need to install this package, run the command on the terminal. Spectre is installed. Let's look for something for images. We have here the canvas image. As you can see from the documentation, I can pick an image and I can write it to the terminal and see something like this. Obviously our end result will have a lot of pixelization. We can't expect something as well-defined high resolution as we see on the TV. But if we recognize it as Netflix, it will be a success. So that means that I have to install this package. Okay, done. And now let's start doing our magic. My idea is to use a GIF and find the frames of that GIF and then render one by one. Doing a quick Google search, you can find a lot of GIFs with animation. Okay, we can see it here. So what I will be doing is just downloading this image and adding it to the project. I add the GIF to the project, so let me ensure that it goes to the output directory. Since I don't want to render each frame of the GIF frame by frame, showing one after the other on the terminal, I want to see things refreshing on the same place. I can use this feature of Spectre that is the live display. Okay, so I will use the ncconsole.live and inside this Lambda, I will be defining the renderization of frame after frame. Here it is, so now let's find a way to look into this GIF file that we have here. And now let's try to find the frames that are inside that GIF. To do that, I will be using this Keyshart project from the Mono project. It's really interesting and lets you find a lot of metadata around images. From the samples, I know that I can open a GIF and find the frames frame by frame of that GIF. And that is exactly what I want. What I have here, using Skia, what I'm doing is basically building a stream based on the file stream on that Netflix GIF that I opened. Now that I have built all this metadata, I can easily access to each frame of that GIF and then just iterate through it. So next step is rendering it. Going through each frame, we can now start to building some memory streams. And this memory stream will be based on the stream of that frame. So what we are doing is that we are encoding that frame that we want into a JPEG and we define a given value for the quality of that image because now we'll be using this memory stream to send it to Spectre in order to render on the console itself. And we can do that really simply by defining here the canvas image as we have seen on the documentation and we provide the bytes that we want to render on that image. Using that canvas image that we have seen on the documentation, we will send to it the bytes that define that uh, JPEG that now we have. And then we say, okay, please update the target. The target will be that live thing that we defined moments ago. So at the moment we are going through each frame, getting the pixels of each frame and then converting it into a JPEG so we can set it to the live parts of the terminal. But on the GIF, you have a duration per frame and we need that part as well. 
Otherwise, this will go so fast that we wouldn't see frame by frame going through that exact animation that we want. The good news is that Skia has a way to access the duration of that frame, so we'll be using that. And then we just wait that duration before moving to the next frame. So let's take a look if this works. Are you ready? And here it is, okay? It looks like Netflix for me. I know that you see every pixel, but this is the spirit of the terminal. Now that I'm looking into this, let's just remove this final part. We don't want the yellow world anymore. Audio was a bit harder to accomplish than the animation part. At the moment, .NET Core has no unified way, cross-platform, of playing an audio file, so I have to be a bit more hacky on this part. Since I don't have proper tooling to doing this with .NET Core, I'm on a Mac and I need to trigger that sound, that ta -da. I will try to do this in a different way. So the first thing that I will be doing is finding a sound file that I can add to my project that has that sound. On a quick Google search, I found an MP3 file. I'm just making sure that it goes to the output directory. And now I need to play it. Since I don't have a library to do that, what I'll be doing is just trying to trigger an application on my Mac that will play that sound. If you are on a Windows machine, you can do exactly the same thing, but we'll be using a different application. But you can apply the same principle. On my case, what I'll be doing is just running the AF play. And on the AF play, I need to provide the file that I want to play. And on my case is the Netflix.mp3. And if I play it, right. So now I need to run this inside of my application. How can I do that? I could start a new process by hand, but I really like this open source project. It's really helpful. That is the CLI wrap. Once again, make sure you leave a star. And as you can see, we can simply trigger the execution of a, of a file. And we'll be doing exactly that, but with AF file on my case. You can do that with different applications if you are on Windows, once again. Install the CLI wrap package. We can create a simple method just to play a given file. Okay, on that case, I'm using the CLI wrap around AF play with the file name as an argument to execute. This will return a task. So now I need to think where I want to play this soundtrack. And what comes to mind to me is that I want to start playing exactly that thing when the animation starts. Since I'm going frame by frame, my idea is that I know that I'm on the first frame, right? If the frame is zero. So maybe when I render that frame, I will trigger that execution. Let's try. So if frame is zero, Let's run a task and call the play method with our Netflix.mp3. As you can see, I'm discarding the value and I'm not awaiting the task because I want to have them playing side by side and I don't care when it, it finishes. Okay. I know that the animation should have more or less exactly the same time as the soundtrack. So it should go fine. Let's give it a try to see if it's working as we expect. Let's go to the terminal, run the application and see if this works as we expect. Awesome. Not saying that we'll be using this in production, but it seems pretty cool. If you love to explore the capabilities of your terminal, take a look into this video. Let me know what you think about this video on the comments down below. I will see you soon. And in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.